Yeah, what's good, y'all, ladies, gentlemen, kings, queens? How y'all doing? How y'all feeling? Ah, uh, if you're asking me how I'm feeling or wondering how I'm feeling, <laughs> not good if I'm being quite fucking frank with you. You know what I'm saying? Man, I'm not looking forward to this, respectfully. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, man, you you see the disclaimer? You see the you see, read up, read up. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> if it. <laughs> If you're, um, what do, what do you call that shit? How do you say? If you're not the faint of heart, or if you are, you know, whatever the phrase is, you know what I'm saying? I don't recommend you watch this. I, I personally am barely watching this myself, you know what I'm saying? They over here fucking my recommended feed up and shit. Like, I'm seeing shit. I'm not trying to see, like, not, I didn't see shit off the rip just off this video alone, like, but, you know what I'm saying? My curiosity, you know what I'm saying? This is getting the best of me, unfortunately, so. Yeah. Um, this is a story I've heard of, though, already. But I have never heard the full story. I just know of it, so. You know, it's, uh, someone brought it up recently, and now I'm back here. And, uh, unfortunately, yeah. No, it's just, you yeah, know, I'm stalling, clearly. Uh, yeah, man. The Junko for... Ferrata? Fiorata. If I'm butchering it, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? My condolences, my all due respect, you know, and whatnot. And I'm I'm sorry. I apologize. But yeah, here we go. This case in complete detail. I'm still stalling. Alright, my bad. One of the most common suggestions to make right, a video. Alright, see, up. we're starting early. I'm not gonna lie. Why did that jump me? There was no. They didn't even need to put sound. That that just it just goes to show all the jump scare noises and unneeded, unnecessary sound effects. Not, not needed <laughs> when you got the visual. Not needed. That quick flash of whatever that was just got me. All right, bro. One of the most common suggestions to make a video about, and one of the most common questions on Q and A's that I get, is what is the most horrific case I've ever heard of. It's a case that I'm sure a lot of you have uh, heard of I've by seen. now, but I'm not sure if you've ever image. heard about it in complete, gruesome detail. Yep, just great. Just what we need. Just what the world needs. Star Trip brought this to us, by the way, if I didn't say. I apologize. You know what I'm saying? This is the story of Junko Furuta, widely considered to be one of the worst crimes ever committed in human history. So for the love of God, please don't watch this if you're sensitive to extreme violence, uh, especially of the sexual variety yeah a lot of weirdery among us so yeah junko furuta was a young woman who was born in misato in the saitama prefecture of japan her family consisted of a mother father an older brother and a younger brother she attended high school at a school in saitama while working part-time at a plastic molding factory after school she was saving up for a big graduation trip she was planning she was all set up to start working at an electronics store High after school, she graduated. Bro. She was fairly popular and well liked by her classmates. She had great grades and was hardly ever absent. She was active, attractive, and attracted a lot of attention, which made some people jealous. She didn't drink, didn't smoke, and definitely never touched any drugs. Not that. This made her seem very lame in the eyes of the thugs around the school, the Yakuza wannabes. One of the boys in this group was named Hiroshi Look Miyano. Creepy already, bro. He actually developed a bit of a crush on her and wanted to get physical with her. Clown. He proposed this and she refused. Of course. Hiroshi was a pretty big bully in this school, one of the only ones actually involved with the younger members of the Yakuza at the time. Usually, nobody dared defy him. He couldn't believe that Junko actually had the gall to turn him down. I power tripping goofies. You know, she did not take this well at all. Get this all. goofy out of my face, He couldn't dude. believe that anyone would ever reject him. He took it as a complete and total insult. He got together with a few of his wannabe Yakuza buddies and they all hatched a plan to get revenge on Junko. They would get another one of their friends to attack Junko and then Hiroshi would come to the rescue. After clown. he won a bit of her trust, they could take her wherever they wanted. Plan of a clown. On November 25th of 1988, Junko was riding her bike home from her part-time job when an unknown boy attacked her and knocked her off of her bike. The boy who liked her, Hiroshi Miyano, was conveniently across the street while the whole thing happened. 
He came to Junko's aid and scared off the random boy. He then offered to escort her home. Everything seemed to be going as planned. While Junko didn't actually trust him, it seemed better than the alternative of possibly being attacked again. She didn't have any idea that Hiroshi harbored any sort of hatred towards her. She wouldn't have imagined that he would be planning anything like this. Hiroshi took Junko into an abandoned warehouse and revealed his Yakuza connections to her. He then took his time raping her over and over. Then he took her to a hotel. In the hotel, he called his friends, Joe Ogura bro. and Yasushi Watanabe. Look at this nigga! What do you look like, homie? What do you look like? You just... You just look like you use... Up to no good. Like, you've never done a fucking... A kind thing in your life. Never a kind gesture. Nothing good out of you, buddy. Man. And you just... You don't even look real. Like, what are these pictures, bro? What What time period was... Did all this happen? Not bad. Rumors. From then on, he and his three friends took turns assaulting her. Unfortunately, this was not their first time doing this, as they had just recently done it to another girl in the past few weeks. They decided that they were having far too much fun to just set her free again. There was also the possibility that she would call the cops and tell them what happened, and they couldn't have that. The next morning, Hiroshi took Junko to a nearby park, where Joe, Yasushi, and a fourth boy, Nobuharu Minato, were waiting. They learned Junko's address and used it to threaten her, telling her that they would kill her entire family if she tried to get away. The four teenage boys then took her back to Minato's parents' home, where they continued to assault her. This is where, for 42 more days, she would be held prisoner. On the third day that Junko was missing, her parents were dealing with the police, trying to get her found. Knowing this would happen, the captors made her call her parents and tell them that she had run away and was staying with a friend, safe and sound. She was forced to ask her mom to stop the investigation. They held Junko captive in the bedroom, forcing her to pose so did they? Like, what the fuck? I'm not gonna lie. I don't know what type of parents y'all got. But if I'm missing out of nowhere, even if I claim to run away, you think if I, over the phone, without coming home, told them that I am away to call off an investigation, that they're doing it? Stop it. Come on now, bro. Stop it. Never is that happening. It was as one of the boy's girlfriend. It I'm didn't bad. active in the bedroom, forcing her to pose as one of the boy's girlfriend. It didn't take long for the parents to realize that this was a lie. Eventually, they dropped the whole girlfriend act altogether, as it was very clear that they weren't going to get in any trouble. Immediately they after didn't. arriving at the home, the boys forced Junko into becoming their toy. They didn't, they didn't they do nothing about it. They beat her relentlessly and raped her countless times a day, often taking turns. They were proud of what they were doing, regularly boasting to their- Four clowns, bro. I feel bad for anybody that shares a last name with any of these absolute goofballs. ...friends that they had a woman trapped and ready for their personal use. They invited a load of their friends to come over and have their way with her. In the I first peep. What a disgrace to the name Minato. Fuck you. They invited a load of their friends to come over and have their way with her. In the first few days, at least 30 of them raped her and at least 100 knew of her imprisonment. Even women were So that's that's a normal vibe. Like am I missing something? You were invited. I don't. I don't want to make light or any jokes of it because it, it's so serious. It's not even funny. So, you know what I'm saying, forget it. But just the fact that niggas could invite you to some bullshit like that and you partake in the what the fuck? What are, like what do I even call it? Like whatever they got going on, and and y'all. Indulge in that shit, like, all right. We're invited to come see the spectacle. <laughs> I don't know where they do that at, with a I... young girl even being invited to come over and see the prisoner, who.
who then took a pin and doodled on her face. By the day seven mark, Junko had been already completely... I wonder where that little girl is now. I wonder if she grew up and, and she just realized... Like, I'm not about to put any blame on her, but I, I just wonder if she realized, like, damn. I could have put an end to this. If I ran home to mommy and daddy and, and tattletailed, I could have stopped this. Just a thought. We stripped Very of immersed. all of her humanity. She was forced to be naked at all times and was Seven constantly days. beaten and humiliated. They would shove her into the freezer for hours when they were bored with her only pulling her out when they wanted to assault her again. Nobuharu Minato's brother and parents were living in the same house that she was being held keep in. My hand off this face bar. His brother did nothing, aside from informing him that Junko might die at this rate. His what parents a were afraid to intervene as they had seen Nobuharu's violent nature firsthand. They also knew of his association with the Yakuza and feared of their possible retaliation. And most disgustingly, they worried about losing their good reputation. You in the were community. worried your your child had an After edge up on you. After about ten you, days right. of this torture, Junko's body was already starting to fail her, because of the ongoing endless beatings. So much blood had accumulated in her sinuses that she could no longer breathe through her nose. Her digestive system was also beginning to refuse food and water. If she attempted to eat or drink anything, she would instantly vomit. Of course. This also led to severe dehydration. Anytime yeah. she would vomit, her attackers would get angry and beat her even further. A vicious cycle that had no end in sight. When the nights got even colder, she was forced to sleep on the like, balcony the of the home in extreme cold temperatures, sometimes near or below freezing. Eventually, one of the men that the attackers would invite over to the house to see Junko would go on to tell someone else about her, his brother. And this brother of his ended up informing the police about what was going on at the oh Minato house. Gosh. Two officers were soon dispatched to go check things out. Wait a minute. Okay, so let me let me let me get this straight. So I'm assuming one fucking weirdo that just decided to fucking join into the 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 weird fest decided. Oh, let me let me get somebody else in on this. Tells his bro. His bro, instead of being another one of the fucking pl many, sadly, many losers, I'm gonna go tell the authorities, because what the fuck do y'all got going? But I remember hearing that this shit went on for somehow 40 fucking days, so I don't know if they just said this was at day 10, or maybe we're a little past it, I don't know, maybe I missed something. But how the fuck could it have gone on any longer? And let's find this out, shall we? Minato's parents came to the door. When the police explained the situation, the parents simply responded that there was no girl in the house. The police took it at face value, thanked them, and left, without ever bothering to check even a single detail. Are we serious? After 20 days of torture, Junko was rendered completely unable to walk. She had had lighter fluid poured on her legs and set on fire, leaving her with severe burns. Her legs had also been targeted so severely during the beatings that they were left with severe muscle damage. She was unable to grip anything with her hands anymore, as they had been smashed with dumbbells to the point where her bones were crushed and her fingernails were shattered. Yo, sometimes, like, I'm not gonna lie, throughout all my years of living, I've heard so many stories of just bare, pure, and utter bull. But it just, like, it, it ceases to fail to amaze me. Like, like, we're, we live amongst people like this. Half the time, you don't even know it. But there's really people on this earth living on just just absolute weird shit. Like, just disturbingly, disgustingly weird shit. How the fuck are nothing 
nothing they've done has been bearable. But it's just like some things are just like, what made you think to do that? Like I don't know if you know what I mean, but ain't none of this shit cool. Um, but just wow. I'm... Some nights later, the attackers got more rowdy than usual and <clears throat> ended up drinking too much. Junko there took this as a chance Underage to try to drinkers. escape. She crawled down the stairs from the bedroom and reached the phone downstairs. She picked up the phone and began to call the police. And what happened? The phone rang and an officer picked up. Oh. Just as she was about to speak, of course. Nice. Hiroshi came up behind her and grabbed the phone from her hands. He put the receiver to his ear and said, I dialed by mistake, hanging up the phone. She was then pulled back into the bedroom. She was in complete terror as she would obviously be severely punished for this. And she was correct. What they the punished fuck? her by holding her down and taunting her by waving a candle's flame all around her. Then they covered her entire body, mainly her legs, in lighter fluid and set her on fire once more. Afterwards, she started convulsing. The boys told everyone that she was faking it and set her on fire once again, only to put it out shortly after. Somehow, she survived. From this point on, oh she began gosh, begging her captors to just kill her and be done with it. That could have been her. Oh my god. Ain't that so fucking sad to even have to think? Like, that could have been her way out. Like, finally relieved of all that she had to, like, endure. Like, <sighs> I'm not gonna lie. Every time I hear a story, see... I don't even know why I'm watching this shit, I'm not gonna lie, this should be fucking my vibe, but I'll be in a, you know what I'm saying, I'll be in a chipper mood, in a decent mood, and that shit will fucking drop, absolutely plummet. Every time I see some type of video or story, because a nigga wanna be curious, damn this shit is really fucking crazy. We're only 9 minutes out of 25 minutes in, bro. Oh, man. All right. Let's... They wouldn't grant her that favor. After being set on fire, they discovered a new way to torture her. <clears throat> the boys would hold her head against the concrete while the others would jump on it. One can only imagine what kind of pain and damage this would have caused. After about 30 days, Junko was no longer able to urinate properly. She had suffered severe damage to her genitals after they had been burned with cigarette lighters. She also had various foreign objects inserted into her, many sharp and jagged. Even fireworks had been inserted into her. The fireworks were not limited to only one orifice, as they were also inserted into her anus, mouth, and ears as well. She was left with eardrum damage so severe that she was nearly deaf at this point. Her hands and feet were so damaged that she Stop. could hardly move, at best. Please stop showing this this girl on my screen, bro. Well, you're saying what you're saying, and I'm not. I am knowing this is not what's being seen. Please stop this, cause she could crawl. It took her over an hour to crawl. Why that bathroom. image? What is? Yo, I I'm already knowing this is this is horror movie shit right here. I don't even know why you put this up here. That's actually kind of disrespectful, if you ask me. If you ask me, I don't... Fuck. A later report showed that her brain size was greatly reduced by this point in time. Due to her hellish appearance, the boys no longer found her attractive. <laughs> they used the same strategy again to abduct and gang rape another 19-year-old woman while she was on her way home from work. Hmm... During these 44 days of hell, Junko Furuta was forced to withstand the most unspeakable torture and suffering that a person can imagine. Some of what was done to her includes being raped many times every single day, day and night, in all orifices. More than a hundred men are believed to have raped her by the end. Sometimes she was raped by up to 12 different attackers in a single day. Constant humiliation. She was forced to be left naked most of the time. Many of the men who raped her also urinated on her. She was forced to pleasure herself in front of the attackers for their entertainment. She was beaten physically every day. 
She was beaten with golf clubs, iron rods, bamboo sticks, and various other objects. She had dumbbells dropped all over her body and her head stomped against the ground, face first. She had hot wax poured all over her face with a focus on her eyelids. What the her fuck? Her eyelids were also burned with cigarettes and cigarette lighters. She was violated with a long list of various objects shoved into all orifices, including, but not limited to, bottles, both broken and unbroken, iron bars, scissors, roasting needles, chicken skewers, and more. She was given only the strict bare minimum of food and water. At times, she was forced to eat cockroaches and drink urine. She had fireworks put into all of her orifices, leaving damage and severe burns. She had her left nipple ripped off by a pair of pliers. She would be tied up flat on the floor and had dumbbells dropped all over her body. The drops on her abdomen uh. were so hard that it caused her to lose all control of her bowels. She was hung from the ceiling and used as a punching bag. Yo, okay, alright, buddy. This is- we're not even half. No, we're barely halfway. Oh my gosh, man. I don't know if I can do this shit, bro. I might just leave this one up in the air, respectfully. This is... This is... This shit is not for me, I'm not gonna lie. This is my first time having some type of shit up here. And I personally, even though it's for educational purposes, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know. This, this shit is not my vibe. I, I don't want to bring this to people. I don't want to see spreading information and awareness on certain shit. It's like a limit to it. Like, if it's something you know what i'm saying that's productive then fine but this there's no benefit of me sharing this if i'm being honest like i'm literally just watching it if i watched it on my own time i probably would have turned it off anyways but i just i don't even know why i'm sharing this like i mean obviously people are going to get curious now and want to watch it themselves but i don't know i'm so 50 50 right now i I don't even know why I'm watching this. I really don't. I'm gonna keep it on it. Not my curiosity beat <laughs> should be frying me. Um, I'm a, I'm a I'm gonna end up turning this off at some point. I'm, I'm gonna just get the warning. I'll I'll try to go. You know what I'm saying? I already started this shit. Already a lot, a lot, a fucking lot, but. I don't know if this is my vibe. She was shoved into a freezer and kept there for hours at a time. Her eyelids were burned with hot wax and lighters when she closed her eyes in fear. Her breasts were stabbed with sewing needles, the needles often being left inside. Her genitals were burned with cigarettes and lighters. It's like I'm hearing the same thing over she and over. She had a hot lit we... light bulb inserted into her vagina and moved around until it shattered. By the end, she looked like a completely different person after all of the damage. It was hard to even make out her facial features. Her body was severely damaged and crippled, and she smelled as if she were already rotting. What are we fucking doing? She was continuously doing? heavily bleeding from her genitals from all of the abuse. The she fuck was that? heavily, struggling to breathe from all of the blood accumulated in her sinuses. On day 40, January 1st, Junko woke up to New Year's Day alone. She spent the day begging to be killed, completely unable to move. Three days later, on the fateful day of the 4th of January, the boys challenged Junko to a game of Mahjong Solitaire and forced her to play. Somehow, even in her condition, she won the game. This infuriated her captors, oh who treated her to a gosh, severe beating bro. with an iron barbell, and then poured lighter fluid all over her arms, her legs, her stomach, and, gonna keep and finally showing. her face, dumping lighter fluid even into her eyes. Then they put a candle to her face, igniting it all. She weakly attempted to put out the flames, but didn't have the strength to do so. This final torture lasted for a grueling two hours altogether. 
Already having been in a horrible condition, Junko went into shock and finally died the following day. Rest her soul, yo. Minato's brother called him within 24 hours to inform him that Junko had died. The boys all rushed over to the house in a panic. Fearing what would certainly be a life sentence, or even a death sentence, the boys started to freak out. Now, but they worried. came up with a plan. The captors then put her body into a 55-gallon oil drum and filled it to the brim with concrete. A small bit of Junko's long hair was poking out the top of the concrete, something they apparently didn't notice. Dumbasses can even do that, disposed of the barrel right. at a construction site in Koto, Tokyo. Good riddance. I'm, I'm glad... Seeing that I'm glad they now, even... never imagine... I'm glad they even fucked that up. You niggas are just living fuck-ups, and y'all can even get it. You know what? I'm not even going to say that, because I, I, I wouldn't. I'm glad I'm not in the, in the, in the, uh, universe. I'm glad I'm not in the realm where they get away with such a thing, because, so, whatever. Good riddance. Something like this was buried there. There was originally a good chance that the police would never find out who did this. There weren't any clues to go on. Luckily, Hiroshi is a moron. While he was being questioned surprised. by the police two weeks later involving their recent gang rape of the unrelated 19-year-old woman, he got confused and thought the police were talking about Junko, as the cases were so similar. And thinking that one of the other boys must have already confessed, he spilled the beans. Thank he realized his goodness. mistake, but it was already too late, and he told the police where they had hidden Where the it was, exactly. Joe Ogura had already been Fucking arrested idiot. for another unrelated sexual assault case. I hate seeing your face. Like, you just, you fit the description. You weird-ass clown. You just, seeing you was pissing me off. I'm not gonna lie. Get this thing out of my fucking face. He was quickly also arrested for Junko's case as well. The other boys were then arrested within the next few days. Of course. Later, the drum was finally Get the rest opened of them, and the too. concrete was broke open, revealing Junko's long-deceased body in a nightmare-inducing, horrific condition. Junko's family was notified and told of what happened to her in detail. When her mother heard the details of what was done to her, she fainted. I bet, She ended yo. up in a long-term stay in a psychiatric hospital. An autopsy was performed on Junko, revealing the true horror of what had happened to her. Yeah. Small bottles were found still stuck in her rectal cavity. My gosh, and it was revealed yeah. that she was pregnant, although the damage to her uterus was severe. Her face was so completely mutilated that she had to be identified by her fingerprints. Yo, as a parent, yo. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 That shit is so fucking depressing. It is actually, like, fucking mind-boggling, yo. How did, how did the... How did we get through so many minutes? I might as well finish this shit. I'm surprised we got this far. I, I thought they would have pissed me off and I would have got all this shit already, but... Yeah, I don't think Being I can do that they another were juveniles, one of these type of the court withheld the names of the four captors. But Come journalists from Tsukong the court withheld yeah, the yeah, names you're done, of the four buddy. captors. But journalists age. from Shukan Bunshin magazine were able to find out exactly who they were and publish the names of all of them. Couldn't save all y'all. Stating I mean. that they were inhuman and therefore didn't deserve human rights. Like, come on now. Nobody really contested this. As we know, they were Hiroshi Miyano, 18 at the time. Yep, dumbass. Joe Ogura, also 18 yeah, at the time. Yeah, dumb fuck. Nobuharu Minato, who was 16 at the time. And, they to change and Yasushi Watanabe, who was 17. All four of these monsters were caught and sent to trial. During each trial, it was pretty common for onlookers to pass out upon hearing the details um, of the case. Like, come on. Even with all that they had done, they didn't really show any semblance of remorse. And despite all of this, they received extremely light sentences for such horrific crimes. They were actually still being tried as juveniles, but after much backlash, they were changed to uh, adult status. Still, okay. after being upgraded to adult status, they received unbelievably light sentences. 
something that to this day continues to enrage people who hear about this case. Can I hear him, please? The boys somehow were not charged with murder. Instead, they received a charge called causing bodily injury resulting in death. In Japan, the juvenile court system is far more focused on rehabilitation rather than punishment. Something that you'll remember if you saw my Yu-Gi-Oh! Yamaji video. I didn't, Usually but... this means that juveniles will end up getting relatively very low sentences. Hiroshi was sentenced to 20 years in prison. You know what? Minato got a 5 to 7 year sentence himself. I'm not allowed, I don't like Watanabe that one. got 9 years. And Joe got an 8 year sentence. If they all would've got 20? One even sad though that's... thing is that these monsters... If they would've all got 20, even though that is not even... You know what I'm saying? 20 for each of them niggas. I don't give a fuck. Who did what, what levels of what, anybody even involved. And then the niggas that just pulled up into the shit? I don't know. I don't know. At least 10, maybe? But all the, the main niggas in this shit? At least 20. It would be like... I don't even know. I don't even think I can even say that with a straight face or... Um... Um, confidently. Because, me personally, I'm ruined for everybody. Everybody. Off the fucking ship. But. Hey bro. I don't, I don't know bro. I don't, I don't know what laws they got going. Unfortunate situation. Not. Let's get this shit over There's with. actually received even lower sentences than that at first. Their hey, thing is that these monsters actually received even oh. lower sentences than that at first. There were only increase to the still low amount after an appeal. Exactly. It of was course. so low that some people even questioned if their Yakuza ties were to blame for this. Mm. What is going on? By like... the time of this recording, every single one of the four boys is out of jail and living free. Three of them were in jail for less than eight years. Hiroshi, the ringleader, was sentenced to 17 years originally. He tried to appeal, but as kind of a fuck you, the judge actually upped his case to 20 years. Okay. The same thing happened to two of the other boys, so this is and after old, seeing man. enough, the fourth boy decided not to try to appeal. However, they all ended up getting out long before those sentences were actually up. That's and fucking... I bet you're wondering if they continued to commit crimes after they got out of jail. Well, let's see. Let's see? After Nobuhara Minato got out of jail, he changed his first name to Shinji. Shinji. He did Clown. this for obvious reasons. In 2006, he got married to a woman from Romania and had a daughter together. They soon divorced and the wife ended up with custody of the child. There we go. Minato couldn't stay away from murder for too long. He was eventually arrested again for the attempted murder of a businessman. No. The man had noticed Minato staring at him, to which he asked, What are you looking at? Minato came over and punched the man. The man then got out of his car and a fight ensued. It escalated to the point that Minato took out a baton and beat him severely. As the victim tried to get back into his car, Minato slashed his neck with a knife he had hidden. The police were called at some point and they rushed to aid the victim. In the chaos, Minato escaped. He was soon caught and arrested. He denied attempted murder, saying he only intended to beat the man. The case is ongoing. It's ongoing. Joe Ogura was released in August of 1999. He also ended up changing his name to Joe Kamisaku. Clown. He actually had the gall to brag about his role in the kidnap and torture. His father had vowed to give their I entire life thing. savings to Junko's family out of shame. But Joe ended up taking this money and using it for himself to live a fairly extravagant lifestyle. Joe's mother wasn't much better, as she actually vandalized Junko's grave saying that it was Junko who ruined her son's life. Joe Yo, oh my... I, I be forgetting this different type of parents in this world, man. Yo. I'm not gonna lie respectfully. You can put me in a situation that was ten times less as bad as this nigga's, and I would still be disowned. This nigga's mother had the fucking nerve. Not even gonna speak up on that shit. 
clowns, just a family of clowns, the whole fucking circus. Actually, no, the pops, the pops, he tried to do the right thing. His bitch ass mother and her bitch ass son, clowns. Actually managed to find some women to date him. He ended up marrying a Chinese woman, but the marriage didn't last too long. Of course. Afterwards, he started dating another woman. He went back there to we prison go. in July 2004 for seven years for beating a guy he thought was luring his girlfriend away from him. He had kidnapped and beaten the man for four hours. He proudly told the victim that he had killed before and would do it again. He was sentenced to four Where years in prison. But in 2009, he was once again free and he is still free to this day. The ringleader, Hiroshi Miyano, went right back into his previous gang activity immediately after being released from prison. He was arrested die. for fraud at some point after this, but didn't see jail time for it. Of course not. Right now, it seems that he's living a fairly normal life. Some might even say a good life. He is a regular patron at a local kickboxing gym and appears to have a normal social life. As of now, Yasushi Watanabe is the only one of the four boys who hasn't been arrested since. Because of that, it's not really known what he's been up to. Since the investigation first started, the police have been able to get DNA from the sperm and pubic hairs found in evidence to link several more criminals to the crime, Good. including two men named Koichi Ihara and Tetsuo Nakamura, both of whom were arrested, and there are probably many others who have not been revealed I was about to say. It is oh, okay, unknown if they will real. all face any sort of charges. Ain't shit really Tom happened to the other one, so... <laughs> Fuck that Tom will tell shit. So there it is, the worst case I've ever heard of. I get this question a lot, and that might be it's, the worst it's just one always yet. this one. There are a be. couple of others that come kinda close, but it's really hard to top something like this. I mean, you've got the brutality, the length, the scale i mean yeah just... that's that's what's so all asking if me. you like this video seems a little bit fucked up so if you enjoyed this video uh please give it a like it helps me out although i doubt this video is going to really be pushed but yeah if you like dark content like yeah i don't so i'm out of here but big res yo what the fuck yo okay okay you know what ignore whatever you know what i'm saying don't go back and look uh i just seen a glimpse of some shit yeah, niggas is bullshit, and this is exactly why I I don't plan on returning to these type of videos, so, you know what I'm saying, if you don't mind, don't recommend no shit like this, um, this one, what it, it was me, so, you know what I'm saying, I'd like to humbly apologize for the nonsense that, uh, you know what I'm saying, behooved us today, but, um, yeah, man, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm so cool, I'm so cool fucking depressing absolutely i need some light shit after this because this shit depressing story r.i.p you know what i'm saying junko you know rest her soul god rest her soul man man karma it, it's it's in your the ball's in your court you know what i'm saying actually you know what erase that god is in your hands you know what i'm saying Amen. Time. Time game. It's a time game, ladies and gentlemen, you know what I'm saying? Don't don't wish bad against bad, you know what I'm saying? Things are gonna happen how they happen. You more liable <sighs> liable. Oh my gosh. I'm just tired and, and and I'm all over the place. This shit got me fucked up. I'm not gonna lie. Um Um, yeah man. The dead ass. Don't don't wish bad against bad. It, it's it's more likely to 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 backfire, you know. So just just leave it up in the air, you know. Hey man, I need to get the hell out of here. So let me just stop yapping. I I can't even think about what I'm saying at this point. So yeah, um, appreciate y'all for tuning in. You know, hope y'all have a great night slash day. You know, uh. You know what I'm saying? Go watch you some some more, a little light, a little more peaceful. Get this bad juju, uh, you know, out of here. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, man. Peace and love, everyone. Yeah, I'll take it easy. Good boop, 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 boop. Good boop.